there's a lot happening. I won't get into that just yet. Yeah. But of course, let's talk about your your career as a comedian and how it's faring so far. I know you took a five year hiatus at a point, and you said people didn't even notice yeah. that you are taking a break. How is that possible? So what I did was I took it was I was actually uh, six years. Oh, six. Yeah. So when I started flatmates, mm. I knew it was going to distract me. Yeah. And I was like, you know, Bright, you can't merge both of them and, you know, succeed in both, in both spaces. Mm. And I was like, okay, you know what, take the back seat, let comedy take the back seat. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, at the time, I was already tired mm. of what I was doing. I wasn't doing stand-up comedy anymore. Okay. In Nigeria, they, they, they make you MC events. Mm -hmm. So you are MCing and you are and doing stand-up comedy, and that's not what I want. What I want to do is stand-up comedy. Oh. I am not a master of ceremony. So you weren't enjoying that? I wasn't enjoying it. So I, I was actually, it was like poison for mm. my oh. soul. Yeah. For your soul. I swear down. And I, but because of the money, the money was mm. good. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so you I like, I, you I can't couldn't refuse the it. governors and all of them. And I don't even do political gigs that okay. much. No. Yeah. So okay. uh, after a while, I was like, I told myself, like, Brad, be true to your game, be honest with yourself, yeah. do what you're supposed to do. So I stepped back and for six years, how I was able to escape it was well, I maintained my UK concerts. Oh, uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. And yeah. I maintained my gigs in the US, mm -hmm. my small tours that I was doing here and there, because that's stand up comedy. Yeah. 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 So I maintained that one for as long as I could. Then I came back to the game this year. I was like, you know what, it's time. And the reason why I did that is because. I'm retiring at the age of 50, right? Okay. And I'm How old are you now? I'm 45 this year. Okay, okay. So in five years. Yeah, so I've got five more years to do this for. Okay. And I'm like, you know what? Create new memories. Create everything. Do things that you want people to remember you, you understand, for. And that's why I started a five-year journey. So for the next five years, I'm going hard. I see. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I, I, I remember, you know, you have this famous comedy you did for one of those, is it one of those thousand laughs that we did? The one that you said. Um, Two things involved. Exactly, yeah. made it very popular <laughs> right here in Ghana. Yeah. And since then, of course, you've been crisscrossing. Yeah. Um, how has that period of the content by way of the lines, the, the issues you looked at, change from how you do stand-up comedy now? So when I did my first, when I performed first in Ghana, um, that's when I did the two things. Oh, that, yeah. that, was that your first time? Yeah. Oh, okay. My first time ever. Because I was there, it was mm -hmm. Friday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it my first time. And that, that material is actually fresh, as at the time it was fresh. Oh. So when I was coming to Ghana, I was like, okay, you need to create some new stuff. So I, I did that. And when it went on YouTube, I didn't, I, I didn't even know who posted it. Mm, yeah. So I wanted to strike the, the person and take it down. Mm -hmm. But when I saw the views going, I was like, you know what, you might just want to wait. Yeah. And from that particular performance, that's, that was how I broke into the international circuit. It was actually, ah, you guys actually from Ghana. did it. Yeah. yeah. It was that, it was that two, performance. Two yeah. 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 It was that performance that, almost every show promoter across the world saw. And that's what they are still, part of the things they are still yeah. seeing it's, it's, now. I think it's one of your most popular. Yeah, because, most I popular. mean, you, you made rendition of those lines back in many of those um, AY comedy shows. No, I've never he, done AY shows. Okay, no. okay. No. but I, I watched many of those Thousand Laughs also in Nigeria, and you did those lines as well. Yeah, well, I, the thing yeah. Is, I, I don't think I've uh, really done two things involved in Nigeria. I, I think you have, even yeah. though not uh, in the same way and mood the way you yeah, did maybe it. Maybe not. Yeah. But I also noticed that within that time, you, 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 you had a certain lines or scripting to it, or maybe yeah. the way you had to. Yeah. But uh, f before you went for your break, you, you look at what the audience, the mood, etc., and then you try yeah, to put yeah. it. Um, how is it going to be different this time? Is it going to be like the first where it's well scripted or maybe you have it in mind that this is what the material I want to put out? So I, I'm, I'm hardly scripted. I'm, I'm, I'm actually not scripted. You're just so, off the So cuff. what I do is when I have a gig, I, 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 I title all the things I want to talk about, create them. And the only the hard part when it comes to creating the materials is when it comes to the point where I need to connect each conversations and topics, you know. Um, 
what I'm doing this time around is I'm going back to how it started, okay. right? You know, there was a different kind of hunger that I had back then. Yeah. I'm trying to, I'm not like I'm trying to bring back. It's always been there, but I, you know, I pushed it down because there, there were other things I was chasing. Yeah. Um, and now I'm, I'm tapping back into that hunger. I'm bringing it into the sophistication that, we, that, that exists right now and merge everything together so it becomes hybrid. So what is going to be happening tomorrow is it's going to be amazing. It's um, so I did a tour in the UK mm. and Europe recent in February, mm. and I think till date it's still my best tour since the past twenty five years. I've you been mean doing. Really? because of the money or watching? <laughs> no, because of the set. Okay, I've, okay. I've evolved. Yeah. You understand? I've transcended myself to mm. where I am right now. So. Yeah, I, I, and that's the reason I am doing the five-year run because I am I've, I've come back to really enjoying what I'm what doing, doing right now because but, this MC thing really crushed me. But how easy is the evolution? Because you know people still remember you for your old jokes, and sometimes they come to your concert wanting to hear some of those jokes. Yeah, I know, right? So it's as if you are stuck in a box, and that's where people want to keep you. How do you sort of ensure that as much as I'm evolving, I'm still carrying along these people who know me for what I used to do before? So I, I don't, to, to be, I try not to do what they want me to do. Mm. I do what is supposed to be done because unlike musicians, you know, like a musician can be paid $1 million or whatever to sing the same song yeah. that you've heard yes, over yes, and over yes. again. But with a comedian, whatever you're paid, they expect you to crack a new joke. Mm. Even if you have old materials, the classics, yeah. sometimes they expect you to throw one of them. But the thing is, once you come on stage and you're doing the old materials, they will think that you're not adding yeah. up. You're not, you're not you know, progressing in terms of your, your writing skills and mm -hmm. all that. So most times it's best to just come fresh. And besides that, what I do now is I write a set for every year. Oh. Like if I'm doing a tour, I write a set specifically for that oh, tour. And so what you guys are going to be experiencing tomorrow is a set that was written for you guys. Wow. When did you write this? At the beginning of the year? Uh, yeah, at the beginning oh, of the year. And I uh, perfected it in February. So it's actually pretty fresh. But things change as you move along. Yeah, so I've added some up. new ones okay, now. So I'm edit, probably gonna, yeah. yeah, I'm going to add more between now well, well, and Where tomorrow. are you doing this? Um, the International Conference Center. Oh, okay. That's going to be exciting. One. The regular one. So yeah. that's the reason I am Two excited. Two things involved. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm going I back. remember you in your blue jeans and then your Ooh. sneakers. So it was nice. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should take a look at that. For ah, those of you who are a little we lost, okay. or if you've seen it before and you're still looking forward to seeing it <laughs> again. Surprise, Pastor, have you seen the two things involved? Yes, I've, I've oh, seen you it. Have. I think it's really good. Yeah. Thank you, but I want to find out. Well, well before that, sorry not to catch you. They want to play that just quickly for everyone who hasn't seen it yet. Damn. Basket I hate watching myself, man. <laughs> Your younger okay. self. Yeah. All right, take a look at when he cracked a joke about people. In general. But well, let me tell you this. You see, in this life we live, there are two things involved. It's either you're a man or you're a woman. If you're a woman, you are safe. But if you're a man, there are two things involved. It's either you're a civilian or you are in the military. If you are a civilian, you are safe. If you are in the military, there are two things involved. It's either you are in the office or you are at the war front. If you are in the office, you are safe. If you are at the war front, there are two things involved. It's either you kill somebody or somebody kill you. If you kill somebody, you are safe. If somebody kill you, there are two things involved. It's either you are being buried or your body is used for manure. If you are being buried, you are safe. If your body is being used for manure, there are two things involved. It's either you are used to grow plants, flowers, or you are used for trees. If you are used for flowers, you are safe. If you are used for trees, there are two things involved. 
It's either you are being used to make paper and tissue paper, or you are being used to make furniture. If you are used for furniture, you are safe. If you are used for tissue paper, there are two things involved. It's either you are being used by a man or you are being used by a woman. But if you are being used by a woman, there are two things involved. It's either she use you from the back or she use you from the front. If you are being used from the back, you are safe. If you are being used from the front, there are two things involved. It's either you contact gonorrhea or you contact HIV. If you contact gonorrhea, you are safe. If you contact HIV, there's only one thing involved. You will die. Thank you. You will die. <laughs> <laughs> but I've changed, I've changed, I've yeah. improved this particular set. Yeah. In actual fact. What is this classic? Yeah. yeah, but you should hear the new version. It's, yeah. it's better than this. <laughs> so if you had to do this all over again, would you have changed something? I've changed everything. I've, I've done it again. Like So what happened was, when I started getting booked in the States, because mm. there was a time, this performance was what Russell Peters saw yeah. and asked me to come open for him. You know, that's how he got to know me. And I opened for him, you know, 20,000 people in a hall. Mm. And it was like, you better do the two things involved. I was like, okay. So I had to upgrade it to the point where if you hear it now, it's like a new, it's in like yeah. a new set. So I've been doing it for a minute because people love it. They do. So, yeah. so what, what inspired it? I was just with my friends and G started and, you know, everything. I'm like, man, there's something here. And I started stretching it and stretching it and it got here. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's the way most of my materials, are, or most of the contents I've created, I actually feed from my, the people around me, the environment, you know, the society and all that. That's how, and it's the best way to get inspired, you know, mm. because it's everywhere, mm. you know. When people get upset, because comedians sometimes get on the bad side of people with some of the jokes that they crack. Yeah. I mean, here in Ghana, we've seen that happen a few times. But have you ever experienced that where someone has gotten upset because of a joke that you cracked, and how did you manage it? Oh, yeah. Um, for me, I try as much as possible not to go below the belt. Okay. So most times when I, cry, when I do my set, it's rarely mm. offensive. Okay. But, uh, however, I've, they've pointed a gun at me before. Huh? Yeah. Over a joke? <laughs> Over a joke. When did this happen? <laughs> Back then. This was in 1990. No, in 2000 or 1999. And it wasn't particularly a joke. It was, I was on set and someone started heckling me. Mm. So I went back at the person and I was jabbing him and insulting his life because it was um, frustrating my set. Yeah. Yeah. So I went in on him and I think I went a little bit too deep. You did this on stage? On stage. Because oh. I was performing, he started heckling and people were laughing. Mm. I was like, okay, I can, because that's how my name came, came yeah. up. Like, mm. I, it was from heckling. Okay. Yeah. So I started going back at him, okay. but he didn't take it. He couldn't take it. Now, th th so after the show, he came backstage and I was like... Yeah. Now, th this, this next phase, up to the time that you say you retire, even yeah. though I don't think you have to retire at 50, yeah. because the boxers always say that, but they always come back. <laughs> Let's uh, see. Every, every year they'll do one bout yeah. or something, <laughs> instead of the regular two bouts. Um, the time you did that, I remember I was in the hall that day. It was mm -hmm. a free ticket for me because I used to work here, so okay. free ticket, charter house, and yeah. all that. But um, that generation also has moved on. They become adults. You, know, you have even grown older. You say you're yeah. now 45. Yeah. And we have a new generation. We call them Gen Zs, their social media and things like that. Uh -huh. yeah. how, how do you look at, do you relate your initial generation of fans to the current generation? 
because sometimes I think what they find funny sometimes yeah. is not funny at all to some of us, mm -hmm. you know. So the way um, I've been able to pull that off as best as I can, it's, uh, it's, it's particularly on my material. So as long as I, I continue to write materials that are significant to everyone, do you get something that can cross section, something that everybody can. I, I try not to stay on a certain topic that they are not familiar with. So I go with current affairs, things that they know about. Mm. Where, so when um, I have a mixed audience, everyone can relate because except you're not you know, alive, mm. you definitely know about the topic yeah. that I'm dwelling on. So that's how I've been able to maintain each generation oh, that's and funny. i understand uh, yeah and you know i came I, um they call us the millennials right yeah, yeah. so yeah. I, I saw i have a son that is gen z as well mm. <laughs> so I, I tap from his his, his own yeah. these times i yeah. the joke to him to see if he would laugh no not really but i i you see listen to him i listen to yeah, yeah i pay attention mm. to what they are interested in and i try as much as possible to you understand, create materials from that uh, mm. point. How but, have you ma maximized social media? Uh, not in terms of spreading your crafts, but yeah. also monetizing. Because one of the conversations I think Bella and everybody we always had was about how, for example, if a musician or comedian in Ghana should put out a content on social media, you look at the number of views compared to what the Nigerians have. and. Do, Davido will do that in one million in two days so a day, and us we barely hit ninety thousand because we're thirty million. Mm. And I know you guys laugh at us that we're a size of. Labels. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I know. I I'm know. not one of them. You don't. Know. <laughs> I know, but 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 um, how have you been able to maximize that, um, monetize? Um, so for me, what one thing that I made sure I consumed first is to understand what social media truly is. So, to be honest, social media doesn't necessarily give me value. I give social media value. Mm. <laughs> and that's the truth. Mm. I put my contents there for consumptions from my community, the people following me. Yeah, that's true. I provide a certain kind of service that entertains you. So I bring value to it. Do you understand? Mm. So in terms of monetizing, I don't, I'm not particularly interested in monetizing my content. Why? And that's because I talk to clients that are interested in what I'm creating and they fund it, which is why you see me, maybe I'm doing something, I have a drink, you won't know, but it's been placed mm -hmm. because I hate doing no advert, mm -hmm. uh, those kind of brands. <laughs> <laughs> I just throw, throw it in. So it's already been paid for. Mm. So I don't care about the numbers and what is happening, but sometimes it's good to always see high numbers and traffic mm -hmm. and all that. Okay. But I have, a, I have pretty much, you know, I've, I've got, you know, a decent, traffic you understand yeah. and for me it's not about the numbers for me it's about the quality of what you're doing so sometimes yeah. i drop a content and it doesn't do more than two hundred thousand, sometimes fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. but i know it deserves a million views what i do is i just continue mm -hmm. doing what i do because i know that one day eventually people are going to go back to these things and you know, re re bring it back, you know, and bring it back to life and we'll get more people viewing it. Mm. So my, I'm more focused on the quality of what I'm creating. How does it affect people? Does it have a positive effect on people, their mind? Does it help, you know, make them evolve to the kind of place that you want them to get to and all that? Mm. So I'm more particular about the content mm. than the numbers. So talking about how you drop content, I read, so there's the divorce on. Yeah. Um, how many years left on? I didn't you said you were getting divorced after a number of years. After 12 years. After 12 years. Yeah, so that how was many last years year. Left? So we have like 11 years. <laughs> no, I already, I'm, I'm separated right now. And yeah, and people thought it was a joke, but it wasn't. Like, and when it's over, like, is that the way of, you, do you want to promote a show? I'm like, mm. you definitely do not know my design. I do not bring my personal matters on you know on a public, public you know, certain platform yeah. and put my personal things out there but it was something that i needed to do 
you know, and for reasons best known to me. Yeah. Mm. And I did that. And yeah, we were cool. Everything is fine. So you did it before the 12 years? No, I did. It was actually after the 12 years. I completed 12 years in November. Oh. And, you know, and yeah, that happened in December. <laughs> so, so what do you do when you go dry on stage? I don't. You don't? It's almost like, so the thing is, I can skip. Mm. But I don't go, it's, it's impossible because what I do, the trick is, let's say I have a 30 minute set. I prepare for two hours. Okay. So that way, sometimes while I'm on stage performing and I'm hitting the crowd, I'm getting 100% laughter. Once I get 80%, I'm like, okay, it's time to drop the big guns. Yeah. So I go, go into my storage tank, bring out the big gun, poo, poo, poo. Then continue, and the next thing, if I see that it's dropping again, I bring out the big guns. Even if it doesn't have anything to do with that particular set, I'll look for a way to drag it in, drop it, wake them a little bit, then continue with my set. Mm. But in, uh, um, but this time around, what I've, what I've perfected, um, the how I've perfected my skill is. Um, so I try my materials. Mm. I run a comedy club in Lagos, yeah, and every Wednesday I'm there trying the material. So at least I know what mm. the people want, how they want it. So I don't just go on stage and just throw a new yeah. set on people. Mm. You no, know, I have to make sure that it's 100%, it's foolproof before I do it. But I go, um, I go with an overload, yeah. Yeah, so that way I'm not caught off guard. There are two yeah. schools of thought on the impact of Nigerian comedy on Ghanaian comedy. Because for a very long time, um, we saw a lot of Nigerian comedians come into Ghana for 1,001, 1,002, and it kept going on and on. And there were some people who thought that, for some reason, that sort of killed the Ghanaian comedy industry. Now, there's also another school of thought that thinks that, in actual fact, it's the Nigerian comedians who came to inspire and help unearth Ghanaian comedians and their talents in Ghana. Where do you stand in all of this? So I don't believe it killed... Yeah, the Nigerian, uh, the Ghanaian comedy. Mm. You know, there's something called integration, right? We we have to integrate to inspire ourselves because Ghanaian comedy, you, comedy is universal, mm. right? Yeah. But based on our culture and language, sometimes it's a bit different. But laughter does not have a language. Yeah. You understand? Mm. So as long as you're able to break the crowd, everyone's gonna laugh. Now, with Nigerians coming down here, first of all, you must understand that Nigerians were like over 200 million yeah. people. It probably yeah. might be 300, we don't know yet. Mm. Um, and Ghana is about 40. No, 30, no. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 32. Yeah. Actually, by this, it was supposed to be 32. 32 yeah. But the last oh, wow. time we did the census, we were supposed to be growing at 2.1. So okay, so that's like 31, so 32. Like 32, 32 mm -hmm. million. Yeah. So now with 32 million, that's Again, like, we don't know. Yeah, and no. that's it's, just... It's, that's it's like, an African <laughs> thing. Yeah. That's like Lagos. Oh. So you can imagine... Ghana is like Lagos. Like the, yeah. In terms of numbers. You just said it. I no, you so that's like Lagos. <laughs> like that's in terms of numbers, right? Yeah. Um, so in Lagos, the comedians in Lagos, they are not all born in Lagos. They mm. came from different parts of Nigeria, from Oke Bakasi, different mm -hmm. people. They came down God to don't. Lagos. They, they were not born. They came to Lagos. Yeah. So that's the whole country mm -hmm. that you're comparing with like that's the whole country of comparisons in terms of numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're looking at numbers yeah. now. <laughs> three hundred million people. You can't compare three hundred million yeah. people to it's a non yeah. no, It doesn't make sense. So for me, I think the the number of comedians that you guys have is good enough for, for the numbers, numbers that you have. So we should mm. stay in our place. No, I'm not saying you should stay in our place. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are trying to look for my trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it, it's, it's a case where if we take out all the comedians from Lagos, all the comedians that came to Lagos, you take everybody out, we'll probably have the same number. Yeah. Mm. That's the truth. Yeah. Okay. There, there, there's something about Nigeria, Nigerian entertainment, mm -hmm. music, comedy, Movies. spoken word, mm -hmm. literature, or literary work. We're told that because you guys have your main lingua franca pigeon, yeah. Even though you have your bar, you know, etc., Igbo and all that, that you're able to penetrate English-speaking Af uh, African countries and other countries that speak English. Do you think that is true? And do you think that has helped the arts 
whether it's comedy or music, etc. That that we're able to understand Nigerian music or comedy better uh, around the world than. So if if you take a comedian, a Nigerian comedian, from Lagos right now, and take them straight to let me say to Manhattan. You can use Manhattan. They will bomb or they will struggle. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why? Why? So, comedy, yes, comedy is universal. But if you are not well seasoned, you will not know how to communicate your materials in English, not pidgin English. Mm. Because it's, it's, it's a different thing when you're using pidgin English to tell your joke. You understand that from when you're using pure English. With the pidgin English, it's where you're comfortable in. Yeah. You understand? You can easily throw in whatever you want. There are some gestures, there are some things that sound better in pidgin English, right? So most com few comedians will definitely struggle because that's you starting all over again. Mm -hmm. Do you get? In terms of music, right? With music, music is about the melody, the vibe, mm. the reading. Like, most people don't even understand what Rema is saying in, yeah. in that the song calm down. Mm. You understand? A lot of people even even though he was even using English, though, there's a way he says calm it. Down. Yeah, you understand mm -hmm. that people don't but they don't care. Yeah. The rhythm is nice, the music is nice. So I don't think I think it's just a case where we have we have a lot of talented musicians in Nigeria. And we are very aggressive yeah. as a people. Like yeah. we are very, very aggressive. Whatever we do, we go hard. We go hard and and, and, uh, and, and is that I something think... we don't have here? You guys yeah. are chill. Aggressive. You guys are very chill. You guys... <laughs> <laughs> and I love it about you guys. And you do? Yeah. We're too is cool. That, is that You're not a cool. problem though? Because I mean, constantly we have Ghanaian um, industry players who are saying that that unfortunately is affecting how our music even thrives beyond the shores of Ghana. Not even comedy. So We're just not aggressive. Yeah. It, 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 the thing is, I think if because I saw one guy, I think I saw the video in in, in, in like last week okay. when someone was talking about the numbers, mm -hmm. like why are Nigerian musicians, um, you know, from number one to, to number ten, ten? Yes, I saw that on video. the chart. Yes, and I was like, okay, he's got a point, but that is not. Um, I don't think is a base for argument because we have numbers. Mm. And it's hard to to to, to defeat over two hundred yeah. million. It's yeah. a lot. And then so the, and we have a lot of Nigerians in Ghana streaming yeah. Nigerian, Nigerian music. music. Exactly. Do you get me? Actually, so, everywhere. Else. Everywhere yeah. else. So Nigerians, they they are they are like everywhere. Yeah. And but be, beyond that, Nigeria. Um, okay, I'll tell you something. When I was creating Ghana, um, the song Ghana Jolo. Yeah. I actually <laughs> picked the sound. The sound. Uh, Dr. Seven, he was producing the music. Mm. He picked the sound from you guys and took it down to Nigeria and blended it with ours, mm. right? And it worked perfectly. So it's not about the, the artist itself, because you guys have amazing musicians. Mm. It's about your own people. They, they are the ones that should be more aggressive, not the artists. Yeah. You know, so if you see Nigerian, the, the typical Nigerian, when they hear their own music, mm -hmm. they flip. Yeah. Do you get right. me? They go crazy about it. So I think the Ghanaians too mm. must start to encourage and embrace and hype the Ghanaian yeah, music as well, the same way they, they do. They're creative yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. I like how you're saying that because there's also been this argument about the attention that Ghana has gotten from the international world and from America especially because constantly we have Ghana beyond the return. We have all these diasporans the who are yeah. coming here the, and there's a lot of attention. And I've seen people who have said, and I remember that even Mo Abudu posted about the VP Kamala Harris and she was like, imagine if something like this had happened in Nigeria and there, you know, the opportunities that would be made available to our Nigerian people as well. And she said it in a very good way because she was happy that it was coming to Ghana, but she only wished that there was that kind of attention coming to Nigerians as well. But you monitor the comments and everybody says, trust me, if it was Nigeria, I would have taken advantage of it. Like so many great things would have been happening um, to us as well. What do you make of this? So you think most times when people go like, oh, I wish you know, they did that in Nigeria. I'm, I'm going to put myself in trouble if I'm not very, very, um, if I don't articulate this well enough. Okay. okay. 
Right. Okay, let's go. <laughs> and you just have to remember there are two things in there. <laughs> yeah, two I know, things. right? <laughs> So you see the year of the return, yeah. like when you guys did. I was yeah. I was around. I came around. I spent a few days here. Mm. I just wanted to experience it. I was here last year as well. I mm. come every now and then to just experience to see how it, how, it, how it is. You guys are different with the way you put your shows together, mm. right? Now, you guys have venues, great venues. Mm. Security is tight. We have what you mean the Your packs venue. that we create for the venue. Whatever it is, mm. it's still a venue, yeah. and it, it serves its purpose. Mm -hmm. We don't have great venues, mm. so when, when uh, people are saying, "Oh, Jim, come, where do you want to do it?" Lagos. Where in Lagos? L Lucky. <laughs> where in Lucky? <laughs> Continental Hotel. That's where you do most no, of your events, actually. Tell it's where we do most of yeah. our events. If you go to TBS, there's a problem with security and all that. You think about the money you... The, when you start calculating the budget on security alone, mm. it will destroy you. Why security? Yeah. So, um... Kai, okay. Hmm. <laughs> you are trying to avoid it, but we're still dragging you uh, back why there. why security? <laughs> if you're... Unless you're doing... A show, comedy show, basket mm -hmm. mouth or somebody else. If I else. do it at a hotel, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. But if I take it out of a hotel to a venue that... So you need to understand that sometimes, yeah, you, we all know that the economy in Nigeria is not very great right yeah. now. And when such things happen, it breeds insecurity mm -hmm. you know, in different forms, mm. right? So now there are some people, like right now, I'm struggling to do a show mm. in Lagos because I'm like, do you think people want to spend 25,000 Naira to laugh when most of them have not even eaten? Mm. So I have to cancel my Lagos show until things get better. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. Because I need to, I, I can't pro, um, create a content only for the rich. Yeah. I need to create something for that, everybody. Else. For everybody. Yeah. So since the economy is you know, not too uh, stable. stable right now, I'd rather just take a pause in terms of putting up a show together. Um, however, um, when it comes to concerts, I don't know if you've heard, mm. but there are some events that, um, that took place in... December? No, no, no. Well, yeah, like when we did the shows in December, mm -hmm. like the shows that we did in Lagos, we yeah. did some amazing gigs, right? Then um, there are some places that those gigs happened that mm -hmm. is like it was successful, yeah. but there are places you take it to. Mm -hmm. You can't even, they won't let you set up. Why? The Agbaros will come, you have to pay before you put your stage here. Hey. This one will come, you have to do this. And you start processing everything. You're discouraged to do a gig. Even if you're filming, and I'm sure you guys have seen videos where some producers will start complaining that, oh, look, we're trying to film, and they came and seized our mm. cameras, we cannot shoot anymore. Those kind of things. Does it happen in Ghana? No. Exactly my point. What is it? Ghana, it's... dear, you can, if you can go jogging at 3 a.m., no way. Yeah. Right. Thank you. you still have to be conscious anyway. But is that why we see a lot of you guys coming to Ghana? Because we hear you people say that one of my best places to even come for holidays is I Ghana. Think, and they who, keep who saying said that, that three days ago? Ghanaians don't know what we have. Yeah. yeah. And they say a lot that Ghanaians don't know what we have. We don't appreciate you guys, what we have. You, you guys have... Um, so the reason I speak for myself, mm -hmm. I love Ghana. I love the food. I love the music. I love the culture. Mm. I love... I love the speed. I've been fast for 45 years. Yeah. <laughs> Nigeria is fast. It's yeah. fast paced. Yeah. So once in a while, you can't be listening to dancehall music for the rest of your life. Sometimes you want to listen to some R&B. So Ghana is my R&B. <laughs> Ghana is the place I just come and chill. Like when it comes to doing concerts here, it's also different. It's a different kind of vibe. Mm. And I love it out here. But at the same time, love my country and that's yeah. why i'm still there mm. yeah. yes a lot of people have ja the, the word jackpot jack yeah. jack i can't leave nigeria you won't that is i can't it's my it's my core it's my foundation and i'm addicted to it do you get me nigeria is like i'm, I'm so even addicted. all the politics and everything that's happening yeah it's been happening even before i was born <laughs> it won't change let's pray that it changes but like as far as i'm concerned it doesn't look like it. But a lot of them rely on the very popular ones 
to voice out the challenges that Nigerians face and changes. I mean, you saw the elections recently, and I remember that there was one um, um, comedian who was called out because he traveled around the time when elections. Was I it was, you? It was me. It w was it you? Yeah. Okay, I thought it was. What's his name? And he's my friend. I forgot his name. The other tall one as well, because he was also called out. Bovi. Bovi. Yeah, yeah, he was called out. For leaving out. the country well, well, at the time. It wasn't. Bovi is tall. Yeah, Bobby is very tall. Extremely. Not very tall. He, oh, well, compared to me, yeah. he's very, very tall. <laughs> I'm taller <But> than him. <laughs> maybe we should hold on to this question. We'll come back to it shortly.